Hi, I'm David Brown from Lease Administration at Jones Lang LaSalle in Asia Pacific. You're probably aware by now the significant changes coming in the way companies account for their leases. Leases are going to go onto balance sheet as both an asset and a liability. What's creating some of the most concern though is their treatment on uh, the income statement. We've been talking to many clients about how they're going to prepare for the changes. What's of great concern, however, is many organisations aren't prepared and haven't even started considering the changes yet. There is some relief, however. The boards have received feedback from over 800 organisations globally in the form of feedback letters, and as a result, are beginning to debate a number of changes to the draft standard. I'd like to share with you a number of the key deliberations that are being discussed at the moment. The lease term will now be classified as the minimum contract period or non-cancellable term and it will only include options where there's significant economic incentive to do so. For example, a lease with a renewal option where, which is at bargain rates will be included in the term of the lease. This will calm some concerns around constant remeasurement. It will also lower the total assets and liabilities created by leases. But it does introduce a new subjective measure in what constitutes signif significant economic incentive. Another change is to variable lease payments, which in the draft standard were going to be calculated based on probability weighted outcomes. These will now be calculated based on spot or forward rates and a best estimate approach on what is reasonably certain. Once again, this should calm some complexity concerns but introduces yet another subjective measure in the term what is reasonably certain. A major divergence from the exposure draft has been in lease classification. Leases will now be classified as a finance lease and another than finance lease. So a big deviation from the draft standard was that a finance lease would be treated on income statement using the effective interest method and another than finance lease will use the existing straight line rent approach. However, when you look at the latest deliberations, the boards have now reversed that decision and lessees will need to approach all leases using the finance lease approach for leases on balance sheet. Effectively, that means that expense profiles will be front end loaded. One thing you can be sure of is there's gonna be many more changes to come. These decisions so far are still tentative and over the coming months, the standards will continue to evolve until we reach the final standard. There's many other deliberations being discussed. And to keep up to date, you can log on to www.leaseaccountingchanges.com, Jones Lang LaSalle's dedicated websites to the standard. You can read our blog to keep up to date on all the latest news. You can download our preparedness checklist. And also you can access our online impact calculator. Despite the delays, the final implementation date is likely to be 2015. And that means companies are going to need to be ready by 2013 to analyse the impact of their real estate portfolios. And that's so they can provide two years of comparables on their 2015 financial statement. The good news is, Jones Lang LaSalle is ready for the changes. We've been thinking about them, we've been updating our lease management software. We have the tools and we have the knowledge to help you prepare.